Charlize Theron is a South African-American actress and producer. One of the world's highest paid actresses, she is the recipient of various accolades, including an Academy Award, a Screen Actors Guild Award, and a Golden Globe Award. In 2016, Time named her one of the 100 most influential people in the world. Theron came to international prominence in the 1990s by playing the leading lady in the Hollywood films The Devil's Advocate, Mighty Joe Young, and The Cider House Rules. She received critical acclaim for her portrayal of serial killer Aileen Warnos in Monster, for which she won the Silver Bear and Academy Award for Best Actress, becoming the first South African to win an Oscar in an acting category. She received another Academy Award nomination for playing a sexually abused woman seeking justice in the drama North Country. Theron has starred in several commercially successful action films, including The Italian Job, Hancock, Snow White and The Huntsman, Prometheus, Mad Max, Fury Road, The Huntsman, Winter's War, The Fate of the Furious, Atomic Blonde, The Old Guard and F9. She received praise for playing troubled women in Jason Reitman's comedy dramas Young Adult and Tully, and for portraying Megyn Kelly in the biographical drama Bombshell, receiving a third Academy Award nomination for the last. Since the early 2000s, Theron has ventured into film production with her company Denver and Delilah Productions. She has produced numerous films, in many of which she had a starring role, including The Burning Plane. Dark Places, and Long Shot. Theron became an American citizen in 2007, while retaining her South African citizenship. She has been honored with a motion picture star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Early Life Theron was born in Benoni, in Transvaal Province of South Africa on August 7, 1975. She is the only child of road constructionists Gerda. 16 to 18 and Charles Theron, 16 to 18, 34. The Second Boer War military leader Danny Theron was her great great uncle. 14. She is from an Afrikaner family, and her ancestry includes Dutch as well as French and German. Her French forebears were early Huguenots in South Africa. 14. Theron is an Occitan surname pronounced in Afrikaans as. She grew up on her parents' farm in Benoni near Johannesburg. On June 21, 1991, Theron's father, an alcoholic, threatened both teenage Charlies and her mother while drunk, physically attacking her mother and firing a gun at both of them. Theron's mother retrieved her own handgun, shot back and killed him. The shooting was legally adjudged to have been self-defense, and her mother faced no charges. Theron attended Poot Fontein Primary School, a period during which she has said she was not fitting in. She was frequently unwell with jaundice throughout childhood, and the antibiotics she was administered made her upper incisor milk teeth rot and teeth did not grow until she was roughly 10 years old. At 13, Theron was sent to boarding school and began her studies at the National School of the Arts in Johannesburg. Although Theron is fluent in English, her first language is Afrikaans. Career Early work Although seeing herself as a dancer, at age 16 Theron won a one-year modeling contract at a local competition in Salerno and moved with her mother to Milan, Italy. After Theron spent a year modeling throughout Europe, she and her mother moved to the United States, both New York City and Miami. In New York, she attended the Joffrey Ballet School, where she trained as a ballet dancer until a knee injury closed this career path. As Theron recalled in 2008, I went to New York for three days to model, and then I spent a winter in New York in a friend's windowless basement apartment. I was broke, I was taking class at the Joffrey Ballet, and my knees gave out. I realized I couldn't dance anymore and I went into a major depression. My mom came over from South Africa and said, either you figure out what to do next or you come home, because you can sulk in South Africa. In 1994, Theron flew to Los Angeles, 
on a one-way ticket her mother bought for her, intending to work in the film industry. During the initial months there, she lived in a motel with the $300 budget that her mother had given her, she continued receiving checks from New York and lived from paycheck to paycheck to the point of stealing bread from a basket in a restaurant to survive. One day, she went to a Hollywood Boulevard bank to cash a few checks, including one her mother had sent to help with the rent, but it was rejected because it was out of state and she was not an American citizen. Theron argued and pleaded with the bank teller until talent agent John Crosby, who was the next customer behind her, cashed it for her and gave her his business card. Crosby introduced Theron to an acting school, and in 1995 she played her first non speaking role in the horror film Children of the Corn 3 Urban Harvest. Her first speaking role was Helga Svelgen the Heat Woman in Two Days in the Valley, but despite the film's mixed reviews, Attention drew to Theron due to her beauty and the scene where she fought Terry Hatcher's character. Theron feared being typecast as characters similar to Helga and recalled being asked to repeat her performance in the film during auditions. A lot of people were saying, you should just hit while the iron's hot but playing the same part over and over doesn't leave you with any longevity. And I knew it was going to be harder for me, because of what I look like to branch out to different kinds of roles. When auditioning for Showgirls, Theron was introduced to talent agent J.J. Harris by the CO casting director Johanna Ray. She recalled being surprised at how much faith Harris had in her potential and referred to Harris as her mentor. Harris would find scripts and films for Theron in a variety of genres and encouraged her to become a producer. She would be Theron's agent for over 15 years until Harris's death. Breakthrough. Larger roles in widely released Hollywood films followed, and her career expanded by the end of the 1990s. In the horror drama The Devil's Advocate, which is credited to be her breakout film, Theron starred alongside Keanu Reeves and Al Pacino as the haunted wife of an unusually successful lawyer. She subsequently starred in the adventure film Mighty Joe Young as the friend and protector of a giant mountain gorilla and in the drama The Cider House Rules, as a woman who seeks an abortion in World War II era Maine. While Mighty Joe Young flopped at the box office, The Devil's Advocate and The Cider House Rules were commercially successful. She was on the cover of the January 1999 issue of Vanity Fair as the White Hot Venus. She appeared on the cover of the May 1999 issue of Playboy magazine, in photos taken several years earlier when she was an unknown model, Theron unsuccessfully sued the magazine for publishing them without her consent. By the early 2000s, Theron continued to steadily take on roles in films such as Reindeer Games, The Yards, The Legend of Bagger Vance, Men of Honor, Sweet November, The Curse of the Jade Scorpion, and Trapped, all of which, despite achieving only limited commercial success, helped to establish her as an actress. On this period in her career, Theron remarked, I kept finding myself in a place where directors would back me but studios didn't. A love affair with directors, the ones I really, truly admired. I found myself making really bad movies, too. Reindeer Games was not a good movie, but I did it because I loved John Frankenheimer. Worldwide recognition and critical success Theron starred as a safe and vault technician in the 2003 heist film The Italian Job, an American homage-slash-remake of the 1969 British film of the same name, directed by F. Gary Gray and opposite Mark Wahlberg, Edward Norton, Jason Statham, Seth Green, and Donald Sutherland. The film was a box office success grossing 176 million US dollars worldwide. In Monster, Theron portrayed serial killer Aileen Warnos, a former prostitute who was executed in Florida in 2002 for killing six men in the late 1980s and early 1990s. Film critic Roger Ebert felt that Theron gave one of the greatest performances in the history of the cinema. For her portrayal, she was awarded the Academy Award for Best Actress at the 76th Academy Awards in February 2004, 
as well as the Screen Actors Guild Award and the Golden Globe Award. She is the first South African to win an Oscar for Best Actress. The Oscar win pushed her to the Hollywood Reporter's 2006 list of highest paid actresses in Hollywood, earning up to 10 million US dollars for a film, she ranked seventh. Ask Men named her the number one most desirable woman of 2003. For her role as Swedish actress and singer Britt Eklund in the 2004 HBO film The Life and Death of Peter Sellers, Theron garnered Golden Globe Award and Primetime Emmy Award nominations. In 2005, she portrayed Rita, the mentally challenged love interest of Michael Bluth, on the third season of Fox's television series Arrested Development, and starred in the financially unsuccessful science fiction thriller Ian Flux, for her voiceover work in the Ian Flux video game, she received a Spike Video Game Award for Best Performance by a Human Female. In the critically acclaimed drama North Country, Theron played a single mother and an iron mine worker experiencing sexual harassment. David Rooney of Variety wrote, The film represents a confident next step for lead Charlize Theron. Though the challenges of following a career redefining Oscar role have stymied actresses, Theron segues from monster to a performance in many ways more accomplished the strength of both the performance and character anchor the film firmly in the tradition of other dramas about working class women leading the fight over industrial workplace issues, such as Norma Ray or Silkwood. Roger Ebert echoed the same sentiment, calling her an actress who has the beauty of a fashion model but has found resources within herself for these powerful roles about unglamorous women in the world of men. For her performance, she received Academy Award and Golden Globe Award nominations for Best Actress. Ms. Magazine honored her for this performance with a feature article in its Fall 2005 issue. On September 30, 2005, Theron received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. In 2007, Theron played a police detective in the critically acclaimed crime film In the Valley of Ella, and produced and starred as a reckless, slatternly mother in the drama film Sleepwalking, alongside Nick Stahl and Anna Sophia Robb. The Christian Science Monitor praised the latter film, commenting that, despite its deficiencies, and the inadequate screen time allotted to Theron, Sleepwalking has a core of feeling. In 2008, Theron starred as a woman who faced a traumatic childhood in the drama The Burning Plain, directed by Guillermo Arriaga and opposite Jennifer Lawrence and Kim Basinger, and played the ex-wife of an alcoholic superhero alongside Will Smith in the superhero film Hancock. The Burning Plain found a limited release in U.S. theaters, but grossed $5,267,917 outside the U.S. Hancock made $624.3 million U.S. dollars worldwide. Also in 2008, Theron was named the Hasty Pudding Theatricals Woman of the Year, and was asked to be a UN Messenger of Peace by the UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon. Career Hiatus and Fluctuations Her film releases in 2009 were the post-apocalyptic drama The Road, in which she briefly appears in flashbacks, and the animated film Astro Boy, providing her voice for a character. On December 4, 2009, Theron Co. presented the draw for the 2010 FIFA World Cup in Cape Town, South Africa, accompanied by several other celebrities of South African nationality or ancestry. During rehearsals she drew an Ireland ball instead of France as a joke at the expense of FIFA, referring to Thierry Henry's handball controversy in the playoff match between France and Ireland. The stunt alarmed FIFA enough for it to fear she might do it again in front of a live global audience. Following a two year hiatus from films, Theron returned to the spotlight in 2011 with the black comedy Young Adult. Directed by Jason Reitman, the film earned critical acclaim, particularly for her performance as a depressed, divorced, alcoholic 37 year old ghostwriter. Richard Roper awarded the film an A grade stating Charlize Theron delivers one of the most impressive performances of the year. She was nominated for a Golden Globe Award and several other awards.
Roger Ebert called her one of the best actors working today. In 2019, Theron spoke about her method of working on roles. Creating a physical identity together with the emotional part of the character, she said, is a great tool set that adds on to everything else you were already doing as an actor. It's a case by case thing, but there is, to me, this beautiful thing that happens when you can get both sides, the exterior and interior. It's a really powerful dynamic. When preparing for a role, I almost treat it like studying. I will find space where I am alone, where I can be focused, where there's nobody in my house, and I can really just sit down and study and play and look at my face and hear my voice and walk around and be a fucking idiot and my dogs are the only ones who are seeing that. In 2012, Theron took on the role of villain in two big budgeted films. She played evil Queen Ravenna, Snow White's evil stepmother, in Snow White and the Huntsman, opposite Kristen Stewart and Chris Hemsworth, and appeared as a crew member with a hidden agenda in Ridley Scott's Prometheus. Mick LaSalle of the San Francisco Chronicle found Snow White and the Huntsman to be slow, boring film that has no charm and is highlighted only by a handful of special effects and Charlize Theron's truly evil queen, while the Hollywood Reporter writer Todd McCarthy, describing her role in Prometheus, asserted, Theron is in ice goddess mode here, with the emphasis on ice but perfect for the role all the same. Both films were major box office hits, grossing around 400 million US dollars internationally each. The following year, Vulture slash NY Mag named her the 68th most valuable star in Hollywood saying, we're just happy that Theron can stay on the list in a year when she didn't come out with anything any actress who's got that kind of skill, beauty, and ferocity ought to have a permanent place in Hollywood. On May 10, 2014, Theron hosted Saturday Night Live on NBC. In 2014, Theron took on the role of the wife of an infamous outlaw in the Western comedy film A Million Ways to Die in the West, directed by Seth MacFarlane which was met with mediocre reviews and moderate box office returns. In 2015, Theron played the sole survivor of the massacre of her family in the film adaptation of the Gillian Flynn novel Dark Places, directed by Jill Packett Brenner, in which she had a producer credit, and starred as Imperator Furiosa in Mad Max, Fury Road, opposite Tom Hardy. Mad Max received widespread critical acclaim with praise going towards Theron for the dominant nature taken by her character. The film made 378.4 million US dollars worldwide. She next reprised her role as Queen Ravenna in the 2016 film The Huntsman, Winter's War, a sequel to Snow White and the Huntsman, which was a critical and commercial failure. In 2016, Theron starred as a physician and activist working in West Africa in the little scene romantic drama The Last Face, with Sean Penn, provided her voice for the 3D stop-motion fantasy film Kubo and the Two Strings, and produced the independent drama Brain on Fire. That year, Time named her in the Time 100 list of the most influential people in the world. Resurgence In 2017, Theron starred in The Fate of the Furious as the cyber-terrorist Cypher, the main antagonist of the entire franchise, and played a spy on the eve of the collapse of the Berlin Wall in 1989 in Atomic Blonde, an adaptation of the graphic novel The Coldest City, directed by David Leach. The Fate of the Furious had a worldwide gross of 1.2 billion US dollars. An atomic blonde was described by Richard Roper of the Chicago Sun-Times as a slick vehicle for the magnetic, badass charms of Charlize Theron, who is now officially an A-list action star on the strength of this film in Mad Max, Fury Road. In the black comedy Tully, directed by Jason Reitman and written by Diablo Cody, Theron played an overwhelmed mother of three. The film was acclaimed by critics who concluded it delves into the modern parenthood experience with an admirably deft blend of humor and raw honesty, brought to life by an outstanding performance by Charlize Theron. 
she played the president of a pharmaceutical in the crime film Gringo and produced the biographical war drama film A Private War, both released in 2018. In 2019, Theron produced and starred in the romantic comedy film Long Shot, opposite Seth Rogen and directed by Jonathan Levine, portraying a U.S. Secretary of State who reconnects with a journalist she used to babysit. The film had its world premiere at South by Southwest in March 2019, and was released on May 3, 2019, to positive reviews from film critics. Theron next starred as Megan Kelly in the drama Bombshell, which she CO produced. Directed by Jay Roach, the film revolves around the sexual harassment allegations made against Fox News CEO Roger Ailes by former female employees. For her work in the film, Theron was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Actress, Golden Globe Award for Best Actress in a Motion Picture Drama, Critics' Choice Movie Award for Best Actress, Screen Actors Guild Award for Outstanding Performance by a Female Actor in a Leading Role, and BAFTA Award for Best Actress in a Leading Role. That same year, Forbes ranked her as the ninth highest paid actress in the world with an annual income of $23 million. In 2020, she produced and starred opposite Kiki Lane in The Old Guard, directed by Gina Prince-Bethwood. The following year, she reprised her role as Cypher in F9, originally set for release on May 22, 2020, before its delay to June 2021 due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Upon the film's release in May 2022, it was revealed that Theron would be portraying the character Clea in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, beginning with her debut in the mid-credits scene of the superhero film Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. She is played Lady Lesso in the fantasy film The School for Good and Evil. The actress makes a cameo in Season 3 opener of The Boys as an actress playing Stormfront. Other Ventures Activism the Charlize Theron Africa Outreach Project was created in 2007 by Theron, who the following year was named a UN Messenger of Peace, in an effort to support African youth in the fight against HIV-AIDS. The project is committed to supporting community-engaged organizations that address the key drivers of the disease. Although the geographic scope of TAOP is Sub-Saharan Africa, the primary concentration has mostly been Charlize's home country of South Africa. By November 2017, TAOP had raised more than $6.3 million to support African organizations working on the ground. In 2008, Theron was named a United Nations Messenger of Peace. In his citation, Ban Ki moon said of Theron, You have consistently dedicated yourself to improving the lives of women and children in South Africa, and to preventing and stopping violence against women and girls. She recorded a public service announcement in 2014 as part of their Stop Rape Now program. In December 2009, Taop and Tom's Shoes partnered to create a limited edition unisex shoe. The shoe was made from vegan materials and inspired by the African baobab tree, the silhouette of which was embroidered on blue and orange canvas. 10,000 pairs were given to destitute children, and a portion of the proceeds went to Taop. In 2020, Taop partnered with Parfez Christian Dior to create Dior Stands with Women, an initiative that includes Cara Delevingne, Yalitza Aparicio, Leona Bloom, Paloma Elsasser, and others to encourage women to be assertive by documenting their journey, challenges and accomplishments. Theron is involved in women's rights organizations and has marched in pro-choice rallies. Theron is a supporter of same-sex marriage and attended a march and rally to support that in Fresno, California, on May 30, 2009. She publicly stated that she refused to get married until same-sex marriage became legal in the United States saying, I don't want to get married because right now the institution of marriage feels very one-sided, and I want to live in a country where we all have equal rights. I think it would be exactly the same if we were married, but for me to go through that kind of ceremony, because I have so many friends who are gays and lesbians who would so badly want to get married, 
that I wouldn't be able to sleep with myself. Theron further elaborated on her stance in a June 2011 interview on Piers Morgan Tonight. She stated, I do have a problem with the fact that our government hasn't stepped up enough to make this federal, to make legal. I think everybody has that right. In March 2014, Taop was among the charities that benefited from the annual Fame and Philanthropy fundraising event on the night of the 86th Academy Awards. Theron was an honored guest along with Halle Berry and keynote speaker James Cameron. In 2015, Theron signed an open letter which one campaign had been collecting signatures for. The letter was addressed to Angela Merkel and Gosazan at Lamini Zuma urging them to focus on women as they serve as the head of the G7 in Germany and the O in South Africa respectively, which will start to set the priorities in development funding before a main UN summit in September 2015 that will establish new development goals for the generation. In August 2017, she visited South Africa with Trevor Noah and made a donation to the South African charity Life Choices. In 2018, she gave a speech about AIDS prevention at the 22nd International AIDS Conference in Amsterdam, organized by the International AIDS Society. Since 2008, Theron has been named a United Nations Messenger of Peace. On June 22, 2022, it was announced that Theron and Cheryl Lee Ralph would receive the Elizabeth Taylor Commitment to End AIDS Award for their commitment to raising awareness of HIV at the Elizabeth Taylor Ball to End AIDS Fundraising Gala. Endorsements Having signed a deal with John Galliano in 2004, Theron replaced Estonian model Tiu Cook as the spokeswoman in the Jador advertisements by Christian Dior. In 2018, she appeared in a new advertisement for Dior J. Ador. From October 2005 to December 2006, Theron earned US$3 million for the use of her image in a worldwide print media advertising campaign for Raymond V. Watches. In February 2006, she and her production company were sued by V. for breach of contract. The lawsuit was settled on November 4, 2008. In 2018, Theron joined Brad Pitt, Daniel Wu, and Adam Driver as brand ambassadors for Breitling, dubbed the Breitling Cinema Squad. Personal Life In 2007, Theron became a naturalized citizen of the United States, while retaining her South African citizenship. She lives in Los Angeles. Theron has adopted two children a daughter in March 2012 and another daughter in July 2015. She has been interested in adoption since childhood, when she became aware of orphanages and the overflowing numbers of children in them. In April 2019, Theron revealed that Jackson, then seven years old, is a transgender girl. She said of her daughters, they were born who they are and exactly where in the world both of them get to find themselves as they grow up, and who they want to be, is not for me to decide. She is inspired by actresses Susan Sarandon and Sigourney Weaver. She has described her admiration for Tom Hanks as a love affair and watched many of his films throughout her youth. Hollywood actors were not featured in magazines in South Africa so she did not know how famous he was until she moved to the United States which has been inferred as a factor to her down-to-earth attitude to fame. After filming for That Thing You Do Finished, Theron got Hank's autograph on her script. She later presented him his Cecil B. DeMille Award in 2020, in which Hanks revealed that he had a mutual admiration for Theron's career since the day he met her. Theron said in 2018 that she went to therapy in her 30s because of anger discovering that it was due to her frustration growing up during South Africa's apartheid, which ended when she was 15. Relationships Theron's first public relationship was with actor Craig Bierko, whom she dated from 1995 to 1997. Theron was in a three-year relationship with singer Stefan Jenkins until October 2001. Some of Third Eye Blind's third album, Out of the Vein, 
explores the emotions Jenkins experienced as a result of their breakup. Theron began a relationship with Irish actor Stuart Townsend in 2001 after meeting him on the set of Trapped. The couple lived together in Los Angeles and Ireland. The couple split up in late 2009. In December 2013, Theron began dating American actor Sean Penn. The relationship ended in June 2015.